Hello teachers! This video is going to look at left and right brain approaches to teaching. Now the short answer is that within a good music lesson you need to have a good effective balance of both left and right brain techniques. There's been a considerable amount of research in the past few years looking at right and left brain and basically what it is it's kind of a model for understanding the way we think. Okay so the left brain as you can see from the diagram, is more to do with your rational behaviours, your logical behaviours, your linear and sequential based thinking. So what this means for us in terms of a Perry lesson might be things like reading um, and notation skills and some of your technical skills as well. Now the right brain is more to do with your intuitive thinking, your non-verbal activities, things to do with spatial awareness, imagination, insight and perceptive thinking. So this would be things such as rhythm, creative activities, uh, performance and interpretation based activities. The key word here is imagination. If we have a student that's been kind of overly educated, if you like, um, on the left side, typically they will sight read very well, be very comfortable with scores, probably have very good technique, but what they will actually lack is a very sturdy musical understanding of what they actually play. Typically they won't be able to access music without a score which of course is very very worrying. Um, they can tend to lack feel and emotion when they play. So the right brain really should be centre stage as we teach. It should work alongside the left. So the right brain is basically concerned with interpretation, performance, composition. In other words, this is where imagination lives. The right brain specifically focuses on three key areas. Number one is oral, number two is memory, and number three is improvisation. And every music lesson should have all three elements. Okay, so let's look at oral, sometimes called ear training. Oral, by the way, does not mean oral tests. This is just one branch of oral or ear training. Oral is merely about being able to hear music and then process and understand it internally in the musical mind. Oral should be taught simultaneously in connection with other concepts following the approach of simultaneous learning. Within lessons, when pupils have heard a new phrase a few times, you could perhaps ask them, to hear it in their head as expressively as they can and then ask them possibly to play it in the same way. Expressive shapings come from somewhere within their own head, from within their own musical ears and their own musical mind. That is their own musical imagination. You could just say to a pupil play it like this or maybe instruct them to listen to their favourite recording but this is not them from within their own imagination. They're not developing or generating their own musical shape from within their own minds. Think of one of your favourite pieces you could say to a student. Now hear it in your head with the most exquisite tone quality and phrasing. The next stage perhaps would to ask them to play it from memory, which leads on to the next element of right brain teaching. Memory work is absolutely crucial for right brain learning. Even if you never ask a pupil to perform from memory, there should always be some memory work in every lesson. Whatever the piece and however long pupils have been learning it, they will be able to play somewhere between the first note and the whole piece from memory. If it's just the first note, then it can work at tone quality, colour and character, still without the score. Memory work, particularly at the start of a lesson, helps to focus your pupil's concentration. Playing a short phrase, perhaps, from memory will often help even the most energetic students to settle down. On a more practical note, if pupils don't want to learn a whole piece from memory, then they should at least learn what we call the black bits from memory. The black bits are those sections where there seems to be a lot of notes within a short space of time, or perhaps um, a very technical area. Therefore, when it comes to performance, anxiety is reduced because pupils know how tricky these passages are and they're already ingrained within their memory. A final area of right brain teaching is improvisation. 
Improvisation is one of those unusual musical activities that people either seem to love or hate. And for some it strikes terror into their very hearts. However, others, they seem to embrace it as the most natural thing in the world. This is both teachers and students. Improvisation is extremely useful. I cannot stress that enough. As a teaching tool, very, very, very valuable. So the key is to start really small. Imagine this lesson. You said to your pupil, I'd like you to improvise a piece that uses the following musical ingredients. It's going to be in C major, about mezzo forte dynamic, and I'd like you to include some staccato. Your pupil responds with a single C note. Your reaction is, oh, first class, short, but it hit the nail right on the head. Perhaps we could now try a longer one, maybe, say, two notes. Now the key here is to gradually build things up. A one or two note improvisation is perfectly acceptable. Gradually you'll build them up, three, four notes, and you'll start to build musical patterns. Suddenly improvisation becomes manageable and non-threatening. This is what is called practical improvisation. Simply using improvisation to help pupils understand and experiment with musical ideas and concepts. It is an invaluable tool and you should use it from lesson one with all pupils. If you do, pupils will always be happy to improvise, play by ear, memorize, and generally be creative without being self-conscious. Whenever you teach something new or wish to reinforce or revisit anything, use improvisation. Pupils will feel quite happy making up short phrases to indicate that they've understood something. Making up short exercises to overcome a technical problem, perhaps, or making up a little tune in the style of a piece they're going to learn. The applications are endless. The advantages of bringing improvisation into your daily work are endless. It's yet another activity that further develops the ear. It develops musical awareness through playing around with its ingredients. It develops creative thinking and sensitivity. It develops the part of the brain which solves problems. It develops thinking speed, which of course is very important for all musicians. It develops confidence, and it helps to reduce reliance on notation. Pupils won't simply freeze if there are no notes to read from. Improvisation also has an important effect on conventional performance. The greatest performances have a certain improvisate we feel about them, as though the performer is playing the piece for the first time. There is a sense of spontaneity. Pupils who are brought up with improvisation in their diet will naturally bring a more creative approach to their playing. To summarize this video, oral, memory, and improvisation work are the three crucial elements of right brain teaching. These three hugely important activities all draw upon and excite the imagination of the learner, and they form a permanent source from which all of our teaching should flow. The constant flow of right brain work, together with continually making connections through simultaneous learning, will begin to cause our students to think musically. I don't mean thinking about music in terms of thinking about the piece or the composer and so on. I mean thinking how all of this fits together. Thinking like a musician, like we do, intuitively beginning to understand how all this then fits together. It's very exciting when this begins to happen with your student. You'll be able to detect sometimes when this is happening as students start to show concern for things like tone quality or playing a phrase particularly artistically with shape, for example, maybe a shape you didn't even suggest, or simply by making a musical comment or observation on a piece. 